Hey guys, it's Emily and welcome to Posey Lane. Today we're going to be making a fall centerpiece for my table. I'm actually going to use what I'm making. Uh, every season I like to change up what's on my table and I usually just do something in the middle so the table is still functional. So I want to do a centerpiece that won't take up too much of the table and will look really fall and really pretty and just really cute. When I went to the store, they already had the fall stuff out in like June and July. And at first I was like, man, that's kind of early. But then I realized some people start decorating for fall in August. For me, I usually start to decorate in September after Labor Day. Like once it starts to feel cool, I feel like it's acceptable to start decorating for fall, even though it's not like the official first day of fall. And when I decorate, I like things to last like a, a while because um, I don't have a lot of storage, so I don't normally do spooky decorations because I feel like that's more appropriate for like just October and I want this to last until Thanksgiving. So I start decorating in September and if I have something that just gives a fall vibe, then that will work all the way until I start decorating for Christmas, which don't judge me, but I usually start decorating for Christmas before Thanksgiving because I like, it takes a lot of work to decorate, okay? and I like it to be up more than like three or four weeks. So this will last usually to Thanksgiving and it just helps me save with storage. And for Thanksgiving, is there anything weird that your family likes to eat that you don't think probably anyone else likes to eat? I know for me, my family loves my asparagus casserole and the recipe is from my grandmother and I asked her where she got it from and she got it at a dinner party in the 1960s. So this dates back a like, oh my gosh, that's like 60 years. That's like a long time. I didn't think about that. So I don't know anyone else that makes asparagus casserole. If you're wondering what it is, it's like a layer of canned asparagus and pimentos with breaded, bre um, breaded breadcrumbs, melted butter all over breadcrumbs and then a cheese sauce on top and then you bake it and it's really good believe me, but I don't know anyone else that eats it. If it's something that you eat, please let me know that I'm not the only one, but you know, what is something that you make that maybe no one else really eats at Thanksgiving? When I make an arrangement, I like to start with my container because the container kind of determines the size and how much I can put in it and whether it's going to be tall or if it's going to be short. So I got my container first and I found this at Hobby Lobby and it's just a basket, but I feel like it gives like old vintage vibes. I feel like it's something I could find at a thrift store or in my grandmother's closet, like that she would only bring out to put like bread in, I guess at Thanksgiving. It just really reminds me of like, something from the 80s or 90s, and I love the warm colors on it. Then I get foam and moss, and I got this at the dollar store to put down into there so that everything sticks, and then this covers the foam so that we don't have to see it. For the florals, I've always mentioned that I go to Hobby Lobby because I like getting things on sale, and I got all of these on sale for half off, and these are, I got two of each. I just got some different picks I didn't get a bush, I got picks, because this is a smaller arrangement. I didn't need things that were too big. So I got these pretty, what are these? I think they're supposed to be wheat. I don't know, it looks cute to me. And I got two pumpkins, and then I got this really pretty like eucalyptus leaves. And then lastly, to cut up everything, we're going to need either wire cutters or like a really strong pair of scissors. And that's all we need. Do you have like a bucket list for fall, like things that you have to do for me, there's like this internal, like in my brain kind of list of things I have to do. And they include drinking a pumpkin spice latte. I usually only get like one or two, but I just have to have at least one. And then hot apple cider. I have to go get hot apple cider somewhere, even if I just go to Walmart and get it already in the jar and I heat it up myself. It just feels like fall. And what else do I have to do? I like to go for hikes when the leaves start to change and it starts to feel cooler and you're not like gonna die of heat outside, I love to go to parks, like forest parks and go hiking and just look at all the nature, the nature, all the nature that's outside 
And that's like the things that I feel like have to be done for it to be fall. I know that when you go to a craft store, it can be overwhelming. I was overwhelmed with all the floral options. So I kind of wanted to show you what I did when I was at the store. I took my basket that I knew I wanted to use and I went to the pick aisle because these are a little bit smaller and I didn't want a huge arrangement. And I started to kind of arrange it in the store so I could picture it. And I started with my biggest thing first and I knew I wanted pumpkins and I put them in. And then because I have a long table, I know I want this arrangement. I know I want this arrangement to be long. So I was trying to think of what I could make it longer by putting something this way. And I found these, which I thought they were perfect for like harvest, which is what I think of when I think of fall. So I just stuck them in long ways. And I was like, that looks really cute, but what can I do that's gonna make it fill out and add more color? So then I started to look for something that had color. And I found these bushes and I knew I could cut them up and they would have different size blooms and it would add a lot of interest. And I just put one on each side and kind of made it symmetrical. And after I added that, the last thing I usually do in an arrangement like this is add my greenery that will just fill it in and make it look more full. And I found these. I love that they're not all green. They have a little bit of different color to them. And I stuck them in. And that's not the way exactly the arrangement's gonna look, but it helped me see that I have everything I need and that I'm on the right track with my idea. So the first thing I do when I make an arrangement is put my foam in. And I love having foam because you can just stick everything in and move it around and it stays in place. When you don't have foam, it's gonna move everywhere and it's not gonna stay in place. And I just wanna mention that this is dry foam. And if you don't know there's a difference, there's wet foam, which is for fresh flowers and you actually put it in water and it soaks up water. And then there's dry foam that's made for like the fake ones. So this is dry foam and you can find this pretty much anywhere that sells craft supplies. And what I like to do is use a butter knife and just kind of trim off as I'm shaping. And then I like to just cram it down in there so that it's so tight that it won't move. You hear that noise? I love that noise. So once I got it in there and I've crammed it in there, I'm just going to trim a little bit of the edges so that it's not going over like this. It will look a little bit better. And that is not going anywhere. My focal point for the arrangement are these pumpkins. And so I wanna work around them. So I'm gonna put them in first. And I'm just going to put one on either side. And with everything else, I'm going to cut it up before I start arranging it. I'm gonna do that just in a minute. But one thing I wanna say is when you're like making an arrangement for a table, you wanna to talk to the person that's going over here. So if your arrangement is like this, it's kind of like hard to have a conversation going around and trying to talk to the person. So you're wanting it low to the table and out like this. Um, if you have a round table, you may do a little bit more round, but my table is, uh, what is it? it's rectangle. I was gonna say square and that's not the shape it is. It's rectangle. So you want it to kind of be oblong and then that way it won't be in the way when you're when you're talking to people. <laughs> Something I forgot to mention is that with this arrangement, because I'm wanting it longer, I'm going to be kind of doing like, if I do something on one side, I'm gonna do it on the other side and it's gonna be symmetrical. And also everyone sees it, so it can't be one-sided. It needs to be looking good here, 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 and here. All right, so now I'm gonna finish cutting these up. So with this one, it's just on here with like paper. This is paper. So it's so easy to just rip off all of the stems just so that they're kind of separate. And I don't even have to use wire cutters. So 
So when I was cutting these off, they were more like this, so if I can put it back together, and I cut one shorter, and then the other one I kept on the stem a little bit longer, so maybe it can add a little bit of interest to the actual arrangement. Now I'm ready to start putting them in, and I wanna put these in first, because they're gonna give me my length, and then I'll know how to fill in the rest of the way. So with these being longer, I, I had four of them. I use them on each corner and I did it diagonally. So this one is like this one and that one is like that one. These stems are kind of small. So I'm gonna just group a couple things together and stick it in. And I think that will be easier than trying to just, some of these I think might be hard to stick in if I didn't have a sharper point to go with it. Some of these stems were a little bit trickier to get in there because the wire is so thin, but I made it work. And also when I did this, I put things like here, I would go diagonally and put it on the other side. And then if it was here, then I would put it here. And I just kind of spun it around as I was going to because I want it to look good on every side. Now it's time to add the greenery and I'm just going to fill in so that it looks really full and really pretty. So with the greenery, I just found kind of like what I call bald spots and put it in and then just spread out the different stems. A couple of the little leaf stems fell off and I couldn't find where they had gone back on. So I just crammed them and pushed them down into the foam and they seem to be sticking. So hopefully they'll stay. And now all I have to do is where I do see a little bit of foam, I don't have any more flowers to put in so I can use moss and just cover those areas. And you can use any kind of moss. Spanish moss, or I don't know what the other names are. This is reindeer moss, and I just loved one. I love the name. I thought reindeer is so cute. And then also, I love how I feel like I could find this in a forest or something. And yeah, I just thought it was so pretty. So I'm just gonna stuff it in in the different spots where I see the foam still. My strategy when I put in moss is just to try to like poke it down with my finger and I don't do anything else to attach it. I just make sure that it's covering kind of down at the stem and it's not actually taking away from the arrangement. And I don't think I need to hot glue it. It should stay in place. And if it doesn't, it's just poking it down in there to put it back. So it's no big deal. So when I put this on my table, I found some things I forgot I had bought last year at a thrift store. I'm gonna put this in the center of the table and then I'm going to use these candlesticks that I found that have these really cute cornucopias on them and these pumpkin salt and pepper shakers. And I'll do that all in the center of the table because I like to have my table really functional. I homeschool there, we do crafts there, we play games there. So we need to be able to actually use the table. So I don't want my tablescape to be something that I can't move easily 
or will only be kind of in the center so the rest of the table is functional. And I think this, with all these things, will do that for me. And I just love these warm colors. I have been doing neutrals for a long time, like several years. And one day I was just like, you know what? I want more color in my life. I want to have more color in my home. So I'm really happy with these really bright yellow colors and then the warm orange of the pumpkin. I think it's gonna look so pretty all this fall. Thank you guys so much for joining me today. I really had a lot of fun and I really hope that you did too and I can't wait for next week's video.